Yeah, this is exactly what you're going to write down. One of the things we're going to find out is that we're going to take notes on functions. And because functions, um, to describe them, do certain things. The nice thing about this part of it is that um, you all have a good intuition as far as what the solution is. But sometimes people have difficulty is understanding how to write down the solution, the answer. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that'd be great. Close the door. Um, and what ends up happening is this. Most of y'all could, I could, there's a lot of people in this class that I would show them a function. They could go ahead and tell me where it's increasing. And you normally tell the exact definition is that x increases, y increases. So a lot of times they could tell me, oh, you know, it's increasing from here. The difficulty that they have is telling me, if I ask you what interval is it increasing at, um, I get all kinds of different answers. And that's where I'm trying to add clarity as far as telling you this is a solution, this is what you need to do in order to get the right answer. Um, and then I'll, I'll explain some things that are the same and different. But when, when something's increasing, you normally look at the y values. And the y values, if they're increasing, then it means the x is, as x increases, y increases. Uh, with decreasing, you normally can see on the y values. So intuitionally, you look at the y values. And then a lot of times you say, oh, it's decreasing here. Um, and then lastly, you look at the constant. So lastly, you look at the uh, interval where it remains the same. And that's where you tell, oh, I know that between this interval is going to be constant. So what ends up happening, the important part we want to take down or remember is that the Y serves a purpose and the usefulness as far as just knowing how to categorize it. That's it. And then everything else we're going to do by um, stating what values x, x and you know which intervals does this exist. And we'll get into that. So go ahead and write all that down. I think most of y'all are finished writing, right? Most of y'all took it down? No, no. All right, just wait a little bit more, and then we'll, we'll get right into looking at the example. We'll get into the exciting part. No, the, the, the useful part, it's better put, the useful part. I, I like to call it exciting because I rather look forward to doing something. Uh, yes, sir. Isn't it Star Wars or like... You mean the notebook chapter stuff? Yeah. Like, um, or like, it's, it's sloppy, but it still counts points off of that? As long as I, as long, if I can't read it, then that's the only time it's Alright, yeah, but if I can understand what you're trying to say, I'm not going to. Okay. Alright, now let's, uh, let's go ahead and show you the graph, and let's, um, let's talk about it a bit. Um, go ahead and draw this graph down, because we're going to determine, and write this down, so that determine the intervals where the graph is increasing, decreasing, constant. Now, for many of you, it's, it naturally comes in. You could, you could, a lot of you could tell me, oh, it's increasing here, and it's increasing, and it's decreasing there, and, and it's increasing here. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it, and then what I would like for you to do is, hopefully with the homework, just practice and understanding, when you see a graph, how to write it, especially the interval the interval notation of it because that's where I get the most um, the most mistakes. Okay. 
Now I'm going to write down three categories. And these three categories are what is going to be required for you to uh, be able to answer. When is it increasing? When it's decreasing? And where it's constant? These are the three categories. Now, anytime we talk about intervals, we're going to talk about one set value. Okay, so like all your answers, all your solutions. Oops, hold on. Let me spell that right. Spot. All your answers will be written. Will be only x values. Okay. Now you might be wondering, like, well, if all I'm doing is writing down x values, what is the usefulness of the y values? The y values only tell you the category where each one's going to fall in. That's the important part of the y value. So, for example, um, this first graph, this first part of it right here, this is increasing. This, uh, and most of you all be able to describe that to me. If I asked anybody randomly in here and called on them, you would tell me, oh, that's increasing. Problem, the, the idea that I need you now to memorize is that from where to where. So if you notice, if I just look at x values and not y, it's going to go right till here. So this is going to be the value negative 2.75. So interval notation, remember we use brackets. Interval notations use the idea of, of open parentheses and brackets. That's what they use. So in this case, I start at negative infinity, somewhere way over here. So I'm increasing from negative infinity until this value right here, negative 2.75. Now I'm going to put a bracket. The reason why I place down a bracket is because it's included. That's the very last point where you could find an increasing value. Very last. Mm -hmm. Now remember, what did I put down? Just x values. What did the y values do? Just tell me the category. Mm, well, yeah. It, well, the this this interval tells me how 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 big where it's increasing from where to where. The y values just tell you if it's increasing, decreasing. Like the um, the next set of values are decreasing. Now, how do you how do I know? Because I'm looking at the y values. I'm looking at the y, as x is going this way. I'm looking at the y values and I notice a decrease, right? So that is exactly where what we're doing. Like for in this case, I could go ahead and say, okay, in this part of it, this is decreasing. You're going to decrease just about here. So I'm going to call that negative 0.5. So in this case, now I know how to categorize it. This decreasing line is going to go right here. And in this, and I'm going to go ahead and go from bracket because it's included, negative 2.75, all the way to negative 0.5. Included. It's going to go right there. It's going to go from the value of negative 2.75 plus here to negative 0.5. So that's exactly where it's decreasing. Now, if you notice, all I'm putting down is x values. There's no y values anywhere present. The only time y values are used is just to categorize. Now, the next one's increasing. So the next one being increasing, I'm going to go increase from this value, negative 0.5, to right about there. I'll call that 0.75. So I'm, I'm go, now that I classified it where it goes, I'm going to be putting down a bracket, negative 0.5, and 0.75. Close bracket. Okay. Yeah, and the last next one's decreasing. So decreasing. So I know where categorize it now. Categorize decreasing, going for 0.75 to three. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put down 0 0.75 to three. That's exactly where it's uh, decreasing to. Yes, ma'am. It'll be a straight line. And actually, I want to bring out an example of that. I'm going to bring out one other example to kind of show you where it's constant. 
because all after we uh, the very last one that we're going to do is increasing um, and it's increasing here and we have from 3 to infinity in this case so it's uh, increasing from 3 to infinity so in all these cases where we have clear defined intervals and where I'm saying I could they, where they all match the increasing all go to the increasing intervals the decreasing all go to the decreasing now you might be wondering why is constant blank it's blank because there is no con constant so when you see a question if I ask you is there a constant in here you should be writing it down no none that's a good question that's what I want to show you I want to, I want to show you that I, I like that question um, now let me bring something up let me put up a I wonder if I have it on here. Oh no, I don't. Okay, let me let me get it on here where I can pull up a grid, and then we could pull up. We could make it constant. One with a constant. So, so. Excellent. Now, let's, uh, let me show you, let me write something down so you could go ahead and um, get a good idea of what it looks like. Let's say I started, let's go from here to, let's say here. Uh, you can. Yes, you may. Yeah, actually, it may be a good idea. Write this down <laughs> because it, it'll be a, a way to, uh, to have a good example of how it works. Now this one has actually all three features of uh, increasing and decreasing and a constant graph. So I'm going to write down the three categories in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and write down increasing, decreasing, and constant. And remember the y values just tell me if it's where, where it fits. So if you all notice the very first line of the line, I think we all are pretty good in agreement to say that's increasing, right? So increasing is not bad. Increasing is, uh, now the only thing is that we need to stay from where to where. This is uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So I go from negative 5, included, all the way to negative 2, included. Now you notice, all I did is place down x values because that's all I need to find out is the intervals of where it's increasing. Now the constant one, yes sir? In the calculator? You have to do, I don't know if it, it's actually if your calculator has a capacity to do piecewise because, um, and actually <laughs> later on we're going to get into piecewise and where these are only parts of graphs. That's how you describe them. Like this graph exists between here to here and this is a function of it. And it will draw it, but we're not, we're, we don't get there. We're just focused on this little part because I'm stating it's from here to here. Um, constants. Um, now, as far as constant, this is the constant one. There's no change in the y value. So in this one, this is the, uh, actually, I'll put this, I'll write in now. Increasing, constant, decreasing. So the constant one goes from negative 2 included all the way to four yeah included and the decreasing one's going to go from uh is it four to six right oh, i'm sorry hold on this does not go there bring this down oh you know what i wonder if i could do this oh good okay there we go <laughs> i have to rewrite it all right now decreasing goes from Four to six included, all included symbols. Uh, so now I'm going to bring this out just for fun. What happens if you ever see an open circle? Yeah, it's not included. So what do I do in, as far as my interval? Okay, there we go. That's lovely. Uh, so like a decrease, if I did this, I will really have something like this included. So let's just, let's just bring that out there in case you see it. 
Now let's um, let's go ahead and talk about on the last graph. There's something that presented itself, and where that we had something called local minimums and maximums. And what it meant, um, local minimums and maximums, were just a way to find out where there's peaks and valleys, high points and low points within data. So a local maximum is when the y value of a peak in your graph. So when you look at the y value, you say, okay, this is maximum. And local minimums are when you have a, like a valley into it. Now, let's, uh, let's take the last practice. And let's practice identifying the uh, local maximums and minimums. Now, anytime you see like a peak, that's a maximum. It's called local maximum. It's not necessarily the, there's a, it, once you get into real technical terms, there's some global ones. And what global is, is like the highest one available in that graph. For the moment, we're just going to classify this as a maximum. And it's given to you as an, when you write down the maximum and we're identifying a point, you're writing it as an ordered pair. Okay, so answers will be given in an ordered pair. Now, the reason why I want to bring this up is because technic, typically, not technically, typically, uh, when I ask about intervals and then I mix in maximums and minimums, um, I'll get I'll get people giving me intervals that include y values, where there shouldn't be any y, there should just be x's. In this case, a maximum, like in this, we, we identify this as negative 2.75, so the answer for this, and the y being 2.75, means it's going to be negative 2.75, 2.75. The lower point where you see a valley, the minimum, all you have to do is give me an order pair of that as well to get an answer. And the answer on that one will be this value here, which will be negative 0.5, and then this is actually negative 0.5 as well. But again, it's an ordered pair. Then we have one more maximum, which is the next peak. And at this value, this is another value which is like 0.75. Actually, if you want, you could write label it minimum, maximum 0 0.75, 0 0.75. And this one right here, this is a minimum. Now go ahead and label this as uh, 3, negative 3. At which part? Oh, this one? Negative 2.75? Uh, this one, oh, negative 0.5 and negative 0.5. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to see back from back to but Yeah, negative 0.5. And thank you for asking. Negative 0.5 and negative 0.5. Exactly. Yeah, peaks are maximums. And then the, the, uh, the little, uh, the valleys are minimums. Yes, sir? Because um, we're identifying, like, localized points. Because there's only one, if you notice, there's only um, there's only two maximums, but they're only at a certain point. 
the other one was bracket because we're identifying from where to where is it increasing. Okay. And this is just saying, okay, here we got maximum, here we got a minimum. So it's just points. That's the reason why we had to, we write the answers ordered pairs. All right. Now we're gonna get into something else. We're gonna find out other than identifying like where it's increasing and decreasing. Some of these functions also have certain characteristics where, like, they identify patterns. And one of the patterns they identified is they said, oh, you know what? There's certain functions in where they, they said they were even. And you might be wondering, what is an even function? Well, we're going to do, this is like an introduction into the concept. We're going to do the algebraic, and then we'll show you how to do it visually. Uh, visually is going to come, I think, later on this week. But, oh, you know what they... Let's see, if it, let me um, bring up my calculator because I want to graph for you a, a parabola. Yeah, a quadratic function, right? <laughs> parabola. But one of the things, that, what I want to bring out is that one. Okay, if y'all see that, um, there is a feature about this function that they found out, and the pattern is this. They found out that all the negative x values, okay, if you, if you took these negative x values, they all have the same y value, don't they? And what they did is this. They went in and took this and they folded it and they said, okay, if I take all these negative x values, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the same y values. And they said this is a pattern. So they call these, these type of functions even. So you ever see a function that's able to be folded and it matches up what you had before? That idea is even. Now there's an algebraic way to write down what I just said. And let me, let me write that down for you, the algebraic way what I just, um, this is, and it, I don't want to, actually, I want to use this example, but this is actually, this graph doesn't go with this because that function, that graph is even. But this is what we're going to do. This is what I want you to write down. Determine if the function is even. Yeah, odd or neither. And um, it has to be one of the three. So, oh, let me write down the function that we're going to be working with. F of x is equal to 3x cubed plus 5. Now, I mentioned the characteristic about even. I want to make sure you all understand that it's important for you. And the characteristic that, uh, that I have in mind that, we should, that you should really know about is this. When you have an even function, if you took the negative x values because you know how I mentioned I, I pointed to the negative x values on the graph? Okay. If you place it into the function and you result the positive x values, okay, which means that if you get the, like, the same y values as you would have gotten with the x, then you have an even function. That's really what I was trying to say. If you took this and you flipped it around, put a negative to it, but you get the x back, then that means you have an even function. So this is how you test them. So you test for even. And this is the reason why we did part of the assignment. The assignment number two that y'all worked on, had you do this, put the negative x value into this function. So what would happen? You would substitute this negative x value in here. Like this. And then that negative x would be cubed. Now, what's negative x times negative x times negative x? Yeah, so negative x cubed, right? So that means that because of that, I'll get negative 3x cubed plus 5. Now, it's at this stage that we need to ask ourselves, does this equate with my original function? Or in essence, I'm asking this question. Is f of negative x equal to my original function? And when I compare them, they do not. They don't. 
If it doesn't equal. So if it doesn't equal, it means that I don't have an even function. So this function, whatever it looks like, is not even. And it's because the test I performed on it. And actually, if you put little three little dots on here, this means therefore not even. Okay. Now we're going to find out that there's certain functions that when you flip them, and let me actually let me bring it out so it could become kind of clear how what what I'm trying to say. Um, let me pull up another function. Another one that you're familiar with. Uh, y, well, hold on. Y equal x cubed. Okay. You see how that function looks like? Okay. If I try to fold that in half, I think I think most of y'all be say, you know what? You won't get something that's the same, right? But if I if I go ahead and take the inverse of it and made it flip up, I would match. That's called an odd function. And they found out that this happens. This actually happens a couple of times. So when you test for odd, this is another pattern they found. Odd happens when you take when you take when you originally try to take the first inverse, the first transition, and then you apply, you actually make it equal the second one. And And it's exactly for this idea that we start with even. Now, why do we start with even? Because you notice how I have the answer for f of negative x here. I don't need to go ahead and rework this part. What do I do need to know is know what negative f of x is. And this is one of the ones they also had in the homework, and where they had you take the negative of the function. If you take the negative of the function, all you're doing is taking the negative of the original function. That's what they wanted to have you do. So we, we're going to now take the negative of the other function. So from here, we're going to distribute the negative. The negative is going to be distributed. So we're going to have negative here, negative here. Negative f of x is actually equal to negative 3x cubed minus 5. And then I need, my ask, I need to ask myself the, the kind of like the same question I did, I did before. Is uh, negative 3x cubed plus 5 equal to negative 3x cubed minus 5? Which in essence is, is f of negative x equal to the negative of f of x. Like this. Do they equate? And if I look at them, I could say no. Because we know that no matter how hard we try, this 5 is not going to be that negative 5 over there. It's going to be neither. Exactly. This function is a characteristic which is not even or odd or neither. Now, the nice thing about this is a lot of times you'll find out that a lot of functions are and I'll write down neither because it is not odd or even. Now, the nice thing is that when you do the test and the order you do them in, um, most a lot of functions are even. But then if they're not even, they're odd. Um, every once in a while, you get, you'll get a function that's neither. So when you apply the steps and the steps, you should know exactly what you're getting into. All right, excellent. Hey, listen, this is what I want us to do the rest of the time. Go ahead and please get out your assignment number two. I don't want you to work on it because I'm just going to go around and grade it. What I do want you to do is uh, work on assignment three because that one is due tomorrow.